All right, let's uh, take a look at how we can tackle uh, some of these tedious uh, problems in my stat lab. I'm sure you'll come across things similar to this one, where it's asking you to compute uh, either standard deviations or um, variances or medians or means of multiple pairs of data. They all seem to have the same uh, type of setup. They give you a population, and that's very important that you pay attention to the three numbers they give you are going to be treated as a population. And then from that, they take samples of size two from that population, and you get nine total because if they allow you to repeat. And if you have three objects, you have three choices for the first, and then three choices again for the second because you can repeat, and that gives you nine total pairings. So this represents all possible two uh, item subsets, right? two item samples that you can pull from a population of three numbers. And then what we're going to try and do is see how the um, central limit theorem works because we're going to compute some things with all of our samples and then compute some things with the population and see how the two match or don't match because remember the central limit theorem works for means it works for variances and it works for proportions perfectly. It works for standard deviations fairly well and if the sample is large enough then they'll match up so we tend to do it with standard deviations as well. It does not work with medians and it does not work with ranges. Okay so this particular one we're doing standard deviations so it will kind of work. It probably won't work because our sample is so small. Uh, I think one of our previous homework examples, we were doing it with variances, right? And then uh, a later one, I believe it has you doing medians, right? So you're doing the same thing over and over again with three number uh, population and then all of the samples. All right, so we're going to do the standard deviation one because just like variance, this is one that uh, you really don't want to try and compute these things by hand, so you really want to rely on stat crunch. All right, part A, find the value of the population standard deviation. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open my data in stat crunch. We're not going to need it for part A, but we're definitely going to need it for um, later uh, parts of the question. Okay. The first thing it asked us to do was um, to create or to uh, calculate, sorry, the population standard deviation. So I'm just going to label that pop for population and then I'm going to put in my population numbers. Okay, so those are the three numbers that make my population and all I have to do is simply go to summary stats columns, right? Choose the population column and then you think, all right, just compute the standard deviation and I'm done. But this standard deviation is the one that is when you treat numbers as if they were a sample and you'll remember we talked about this a long time ago that there are two slightly different formulas right when we're when we're treating numbers as if they come from a sample you do the whole x minus x bar and you know you get all those deviations you square them you add them all together and then you divide by n minus 1 the size of your sample minus 1 and that's that correction because the um, it always overestimates or uh, sorry underestimates and so by doing the n minus 1 it makes the numbers uh, a little bit bigger and it, it gets you a more accurate representation but this is not a sample this is we're treating it right as a population so you have to scroll down and choose unadjusted standard deviation and you'll see they also have unadjusted variance so if you're doing this with the variance question it's the same thing if you're if you're doing the variance of the population you have to compute the unadjusted variance and if you're doing the standard deviation of the population it's the unadjusted standard deviation and then this divides by n instead of n minus one and it gives us the correct answer okay I'm gonna do both of them just so you can see that they are different and that's why um, we have to worry about this. I would also suggest that you maybe get in the habit of always scrolling down and storing your things in the data table because often times you'll have these multi-step uh, questions where you have to kind of do something with the stuff that you already computed and if you have it stored in the table then it's there it's ready for you to do other uh, computations with it. Okay so you can see the standard deviation, the, the normal one that we normally do when we're treating it as a, a sample is 3.6, but the unadjusted is 2.9. Quite a big difference, right? And that's because of treating it like um, a population, so dividing by n versus a sample, dividing by n minus 1.
All right, round of three decimals. So there's four of them. So that means that one needs to be a four. Ta-da. OK, now here's the one that you're really going to want to use technology for, because now they want you to find the standard deviation of each of these nine samples. That means you're finding the standard deviation of three and three, and then you're finding the standard deviation of three and five, and then of three and 10, and so on and so forth. So if you go back here, here are all of your numbers. All right. So here's your first pair, three and three, right? Three and five, and so on and so forth. And you want to compute standard deviations of each of those. So just go to stat, summary stats, and now rows, because you're going to compute it on a row of data. Now, I, I, in the past, I've told you guys to delete the sample column, but one of my very intelligent students pointed out that you don't need to do that if you just, when you go here, when you select these two columns, StatCrunch is actually smart enough to only select the data that's in those two columns. So it doesn't matter that you have all the other junk around it. So you don't have to worry about deleting anything. Just select the two columns that have you know, the, the data in it that you want to work with. And then since we're calculating the standard deviation, I would just choose standard deviation so you don't have all that extra stuff. Again, I would store it in my data table because we're going to need it later, trust me, and then hit compute. And so now here's my new column with all of my um, standard deviations. So I can go over here and start choosing one. If there's more than one correct uh, choice here, always choose the smaller one. You should always make this table go from smallest to biggest. And the smallest one I have is a standard deviation of zero. Probability is just how many, right, good over total. Zero showed up three out of nine. You always have to reduce. So one third. Then we go to the next one. The next one is 1.414, right? And if you look over here, that showed up twice. So two ninths. The next one is 3.5, right? Also showed up twice. Last but not least, the 4.95 also showed up twice. Now, find the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample standard deviations. That sounds really complicated with all those words, but find the mean. All right, we're going to find the average of something. What are we finding the average of? A sample distribution. All right, a sample distribution of what? A sample distribution of sample standard deviations. This is your sample distribution of sample standard deviations, right? We had these nine samples, a, a, a two Right, two numbers sampled from a population of three. For each of those samples, we calculated a standard deviation. These are all standard deviations. And then this is just a display of all of those standard deviations. That's my sampling distribution. Right, It shows how many I have of each thing. If we graphed it, we would see that it would, it would almost look uniform, right? because we have two, 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 and three. OK. So to find the mean of this, we go back to summary stats, columns this time, because we're doing right the mean of a column of data. We choose the proper column, which is just the row standard deviation stuff. And again, I would just click on the thing that you need. You don't need all the extra junk. Um, you don't really need to store these things in the data table, but like I said, it's kind of a good habit to get into. OK, so there's my number. I can now. Control C, click on here, Control V, right, for copy paste, take it down to three decimal places. So there's four decimal places, so I round that up, and that's going to round up to two, right, because the eight makes the nine a zero, which really rounds the next one up and the next one up, so it goes to 2.2. .2. And then now you get to. Um, answer these weird questions at the end. Well, you'll remember that this was the unadjusted standard deviation of the population. So that's the standard deviation of our population, 2.9. Here is the standard deviation, well, the average standard deviation of our samples. Are those things the same, right? It's it, They look like they're close enough that you might think that they're the same, but it really boils down to um, a certain page in your book. If you look on page 272 of your book, it talks about 
these estimators, right? We're, the whole reason why we do statistics is we're trying to estimate something in the population based on a statistic that we get from a sample, right? A statistic is a measurement on a sample. A parameter is a measurement on the population. So we're calculating these statistics, these means, variances, proportions, all these different things, and we're using those as a best guess as to what we think the actual parameter value of the population is. Right? We want to know what the actual average age is of all the people in the United States, so we take a sample, we calculate a statistic, the average of our sample, and we use that to guess on the parameter, the average age, right, the mean of the population. Some estimators are good and some estimators are not so good and by good they mean unbiased versus biased you know some estimators um it's kind of like shooting an arrow at a target and if it's unbiased it it might miss and, and you know more often than not it will miss but it misses in a random pattern a biased estimator would be like having a strong crosswind or something where every time you shoot your arrow it misses but always misses to the left and so that's a biased estimator, something that has a, a bias that pulls it in one direction. You know, your estimate is always bigger than it should be, or always smaller than it should be, or something like that. Unbiased estimators are better because that randomness we can account for, and it allows us to actually get a pretty decent guess on the population. And the unbiased estimators are the three biggies, the mean, the variance, and the proportion. Right, proportion just meaning number of things in our sample. So we do proportions whenever we have data that we can't calculate um, means on because it's not numerical data. So we use proportions when we have uh, nominal level data. <clears throat> so you just look at the number of people in your population that have blue eyes and then you calculate a percentage and that's a proportion, right? Well, the biased estimators, as I mentioned before, are the median, the range, and the standard deviation. But the standard deviation, it's very important it's not hugely biased it's a very small bias and so because it's relatively small as long as your sample is relatively large you can often still use the standard deviation to um, <clears throat> estimate the uh, true population standard deviation well we don't really have a large um, sample here right we don't have a we have a population of three <laughs> and a sample of two so it really should be that the sample standard deviations do not target, right? So do not target the population standard deviation. Therefore, sample standard deviations are biased estimators. Check the answer, right? So even though the numbers are relatively close, <clears throat> we know that according to page 272 in our book and according to the rules of statistics, standard deviations don't do a good job unless our sample is really big and in, in all of our homework examples the sample's not going to be large enough. Range does a bad job and median does a bad job. So when you come across the homework question where you're doing it with the medians, you're going to answer the same thing. The medians do not target the population, therefore the medians are biased estimators. Okay. Um, <clears throat> obviously if you come across questions that ask you to do this with the variance or the means, those would be they do target and they are unbiased estimators. Okay, I hope this helps, guys. Um, I know these can be tedious to do them by hand, so anytime you come across a question that seems like it's a lot of busy work to do it by hand, please, please ask, because my intention is never to have you waste you know, a lot of time doing uh, rote work over and over again by hand. There's always an easier way to do it with technology.